ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் செவன்த் சப்ஜெக்ட் ஜியாகிரஃபி சாப்டர் லெவன் கவுண்டர் மேப்ஸ் அண்ட் லேண்ட்ஃபார்ம்ஸ் டியர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் இன் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் ஃபைவ் யூ ஹவ் கேதர்ட் சம் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் அபவுட் ஹவு ஹைட் அண்ட் ரிலீஃப் ஆர் ஷோன் ஆன் அ மேப் நவ் லெட் இஸ் கேரி அவுட் அண்ட் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ஆன் த சேம் டாபிக் Take a large oblate shaped potato like the one you can see here and other required items. Oblate means spherical in shape. So along with the potato take other items like a scale, sketch pen, paper, knife and a toothpick. Now observe how a potato appears when seen from front and when seen from above. you will definitely note the difference now take the knife and cut the potato into two parts so that each part has a flat base so while doing this activity you have to be very careful since you will be using a knife you can ask parental help while doing this task so cut the potato into two parts so that each part has a flat base so you will see here the flat base now rest the cut half on its flat base and measure its height you have to measure the height in millimeters using a scale so the transparent scale is used to measure the height and the pink scale will indicate where exactly the height is how much is the height okay now next after measuring the height you are going to take this half part of the potato this is a potato hill the tapering side that means the top part of the potato is the hill top okay now our next task is to draw two circles each going around the hill okay so this is a potato hill and we are going to draw two circles going around it you can measure about 10 mm for each circle or you can just take it and one near the base we will draw a circle and one near the top part of the hill accordingly you will complete both the circles so that you can have the hill potato hill and we can slice it this potato in around those circles to draw a contour lines later so first complete one circle near the base and then you're going to complete one more circle around the potato hill on top draw two circles each going around the hill one near the top and the other close to the base keep sufficient distance between the circles the circle near the top will be smaller now your task is to slice the potato on these circles so again be very careful while doing this as i mentioned earlier you can ask your parent to help you when you're carrying out this activity okay so please seek parental guidance when carrying out the activity so around those two circles we have sliced the potato now be careful to put the slices back into order from where you have cut them on those lines exactly the lines should overlap each other properly so arrange it carefully once you have arranged it remember if possible do not separate the slices at all just cut it and arrange it properly immediately insert a toothpick or a piece of pointed stick through the slices vertically now without room removing the toothpick place the sliced potato on a piece of paper this potato hill which we have made after slicing it and inserting a toothpick we are going to place it on a paper now with the help of the sketch pen move your sketch pen along the edge of the lowest slice and draw its outline it will be nearly circular in shape so here we have a potato hill 
and we are drawing the outline of the lowest part after drawing the outline pull the toothpick upwards remove the lowest slice very delicately and keep it aside repeat the same procedure for the other two slices now we are going to draw now since this was not a very large potato medium size so we have got the circles very close lines very concentric lines very close to each other so see that you take a potato which is tapering towards its end so that you will be able to draw circles with a sufficient gap in between them okay you can see here the gap is minimum but that doesn't matter since we are learning how counter lines are drawn this is an example so we complete the circle in a circle now we will do the same procedure for the other slice we'll remove one more slice and we will draw its outline so repeat the same procedure for the other slice as well and draw the concentric circles now observe the figure that is formed after the exercise is complete you will note that you have drawn three concentric circles now you have to write the height of the potato that you had measured earlier in the center of the innermost circle so i had measured it 35.10 mm so i will write 35.10 in the center of the innermost circle now measure the thickness of all the slices you have kept aside give value 0 to the outermost circle so 0 mm how will you give the values to the other lines think about it do you think that the thickness of each slice that you have measured can help you yes the thickness of lowermost slice is 10 mm so i will write 10 as the first interval the next slice is also measuring 10 mm so from base its measurement will be 10 plus 10 20 so the second circle i will write 20 mm so this way we have completed our potato hill sketch so you can see now a diagram showing potato hill sketch you can do this try it for yourself now what is counter line interval here you can see 0 10 20 means 10 mm is the interval of counter lines so let us now see in textbook revise this activity once again as given in your textbook you can try it for yourself take a large oblate shaped potato and other required items as shown above so this is what we have done observe how a potato appears when seen from the front and when seen from above draw an outline of the potato in your notebook cut the potato into two parts so that each part has a flat base rest the cut half on its flat base and measure its height in millimeters this is a potato hill the tapering side of the potato is the hill top here okay on top here is the hill top draw two circles each going around the hill one near the top and the other close to the base keep sufficient distance between the circles the circle near the top will be smaller so this is what we did just now in the activity so let's revise again now you will slice the potato on these circles do not separate the slices insert a toothpick or a piece of pointed stick through the slices vertically without removing the toothpick place the sliced potato on a piece of paper moving a pencil along the edge of the lowest slice draw its outline it will be nearly circular in shape after drawing the outline pull the toothpick upwards remove the lowest slice delicately and keep it aside repeat the same procedure for the other two slices observe the figure that is formed after the exercise is complete you will note that you have drawn three concentric 
circles. So this is a potato hill sketch as given in textbook. Here the counter line interval is 30 millimeters. So it depends on the size of the potato how much counter line interval you get. Now next think about it. What did we achieve in this activity? We have transferred a three dimensional object. Okay. The potato into a two dimensional picture. In reality, it is not possible to make the slices of a mountain or any other landform and place them on paper or on the ground to draw a two dimensional picture of that landform. For this, mathematical and survey methods are applied. You will learn about these methods if you study geography as a special subject at a later stage. A model of the relief in an area is shown in figure 11.1a. Observe it carefully and answer the questions. Which landforms do you observe in this model? We can see plains, hills, plateaus. Okay. Which colors have been used on them? You can see blue, green. Okay. Now, observe the figure in the map given in figure 11.1b. And answer the following questions. Okay. Let's see what questions are there. It's in your textbook on page 72. Where you can see both the diagrams very clearly. So the first question is. Which landform. What all do you see in the map? So what all we see in the map. We can see the altitude of landforms slopes of landforms, di direction of slopes of landforms, the spread of a particular landform in a particular region. We are talking about figure 11.1b, this figure here. Now, what is the general direction of the ranges shown in the map? The general direction of the ranges shown in the map is east to west. We can say the direction is from east to west. In the map, you can see here, the direction shown as north is pointing this way. This is south and this is east and east to west. Okay. Next. Towards which direction is the flat land located in the map? The flat land is located towards the south. We can see if north is here then this is the south. What are the maximum and minimum values of the lines in the map? The maximum values and the minimum values are between 800 and 600 meters respectively. What do these values indicate? These values indicate the altitude, the height of different places from the sea level. Do you find any similarities in the map and the model in figure 11.1a? What are those? Yes. We find similarities in the map and the model in figure 11.1a. The landforms that are shown by different colors in a model in figure 11.1a are shown by counter lines in counter line map which is figure 11.1b. Now which figure gives us more information and what is that information? So definitely the second figure that is this one figure 11.1b counter line map gives us more information. Counterline map gives additional information of altitude of a particular place from sea level, the nature of slope and direction of slope of a particular place. Is there any similarity between this map and the sketch map of the potato hill? Yes, there are many similarities between this map and the sketch map of the potato hill. So while studying different landforms on the surface of the earth, one has to take into consideration various facets of landforms like altitude, relief, slope, direction of slope and the drainage. For this, maps prepared using particular methods are used. These are known as contour maps. These ma maps help us to understand the above characteristics of the landforms. These maps are of immense use to mountaineers, trekkers, soldiers, defense officers, etc. These maps prove to be of great use in the planning for a region too. So now, use your brain power. When one sees a landform on a contour map, what is the observer's position 
with respect to the landform. For example, a hill is shown with the help of contours on a map. From where do you think you are looking at it? So your answer definitely will be that when one sees a landform on a contour map, the observer's position with respect to the landform is such that the observer is looking at the landform from the above. Just as you saw the activity of potato hill sketch. So a hill is shown with the help of contours on a map. We are looking at it from the above. Now, a 3D model is given in figure 11.3a. The northern part of the model shows the basin of the rivers Mulla Mutha. To its south is the Katraj Dibegat range extending from the west to the east. Beyond that, some portion of Karha Basin is seen. Observe this model and the map figure 11.3b given on your page 73 of your textbook and answer some questions given there. The first question asked is, in which direction does Fort Purandar lie? So Fort Purandar is here and in the map we can see north direction is pointed downwards. That means this is south. So we can see that Fort Purandar lies in the south direction. Second question what is the direction of flow of the river Karha? So the flow, the direction of the flow of river Karha is from west to east. You can see north, down is south. So this is west and this is east. That means Karha river is flow, flowing from west to east. So you have to follow the direction given on the map and accordingly answer. In which parts are the hill ranges not observed? The hill ranges are not observed in the eastern parts. So here you can see there are less or almost no hill ranges in the eastern part. Next question, fourth one. Which part of the map is not seen in the model? Why? The altitude of a particular place, the nature and direction of slope of a particular place etc. part of the map are not seen in the model. These details are not seen in the model as mathematical and survey methods are not used while preparing model. Next question, in which direction does the altitude of Katraj Dibigat range decreases? The altitude of Katraj Dibigat range, you can see it here, it decreases from west towards the east. Here it is 650, then 600, then 550. So this is west and that side is east. So from west to east, the Divegat range is decreasing. In which direction are higher hill ranges located? Higher hill ranges are located in the southern direction. You can see here 760 is the highest almost we can see. So this way we have answered the questions based on the given figure 11.3b. Always remember, contour lines join places with the same altitude on a map. Therefore, generally, they do not cross each other. So, this way we have completed our geography chapter 11, contour maps and landforms. Do read the textbook for a better understanding. With this, we have also completed our entire portion for Geography Standard 7. Stay safe, keep learning and thank you.